Today's video from Windy Willows Wholesale Nursery is going to focus on rainwater harvesting. A basic rainwater harvesting system comprises of a rainwater tank. This is an example of a 500 litre rainwater tank. And the size of the tank will depend on how much water you would like to store. Second element is a guttering system. Now, if we look at the guttering system on this, on our office here, you can see that the roof catches the water. The water runs into the guttering system and from the guttering system it runs through that white box which is a leaf catcher that strains out all of the leaves and the twigs. The water then runs down this 110 millimeter pipe and it runs straight into our rainwater tank. With this basic system you would then have a tap at the bottom of your tank which allows you to decant water from the tap into a watering can which you can then use for watering your garden. Although this is a somewhat labor-intensive exercise, it does mean that you're utilizing all of the spare water that falls on your roof for watering the garden. This water can also be taken for use in the house if you want to use it for flushing toilets. You would simply fill your watering can, take it into the house and fill your toilets. Uh, the basic system also comprises a strong base for your tank. You'll see that we've got a concrete slab at the bottom and we've raised the tank off ground level by putting three layers of bricks. This enables us to get the tap off the ground, uh, which means that you can put a watering can under the rainwater tank in order to decant your water. The next level of rainwater harvesting would include municipal backup. What we've done here is that we have interrupted the municipal feed that comes into your house. We've taken a pipe underground and the pipe comes up here bringing water in from the municipal mains through a solenoid switch into the tank. What this enables us to do is to ensure that your tank is always full. Whatever rainwater you catch will fill the tank up to a certain portion. The rest of the tank will be filled with your municipal water. Now in order to prevent the tank from being entirely filled with municipal water, we use a float switch. Um, this float switch inside here is hanging at a certain level in the tank. If I put the float switch at this level, it will mean that we will always have municipal water up to this level, controlled by the float switch and by this electronic solenoid. Uh, if I would like to capture more water, if it's winter for example, and I would like the municipal backup to be up to this level in my tank, then I simply pull this cable and lift this float switch up. The higher the float switch is, if you listen carefully, you can hear the water beginning to pour into the tank. Uh, the higher the flow switch is, the more municipal water comes into the tank, the less space is left for rainwater. So essentially, in, in winter, we have the float switch fairly high, so we always have this much municipal water. In summer, I drop my flow switch to this level, so that that's the municipal water, and the rest of the space in my tank is left for rainwater. This ensures that you always have a backup water supply so that if you run out of water, you know that your tank is always going to be full in the event of a water outage. Okay, I mentioned earlier that the water coming from this, tamp, from this tank through this tap is low pressure water. That fills your watering can slowly and wouldn't really enable you to connect a sprinkler in order to water your garden. So when we get to level three of our rainwater harvesting system, we boost the pressure by adding a pressure pump. So this pressure pump will give you an equivalent of municipal pressure. It will give you the equivalent of three bars uh, of water pressure which will then enable you to connect a tap uh, with a high pressure tap onto the system and to connect a water sprinkler. So if you look at the water pressure coming from the, the, the high pressure tap, so this is a high pressure tap because it's connected after the pump. So from the pump if I switch on that tap, immediately the pump will switch on, giving me high pressure and increase the flow of water through this tap. So if we have a look, I'm going to switch on the water. You can see that pressure, the water coming out of the tap, and you may be able to hear the motor that is switched on as I switched on the tap. Okay, let's stop there. So, you can use this high pressure tap either to fill your watering can or you can use it to connect a hose pipe to water your garden. What I've done here is I've connected a hose pipe and at the end of the hose pipe I've got a sprinkler 
an oscillating sprinkler which will water my whole garden. So now if I switch on the tap, in the background you can hear the motor switching on. And now you can see the water spraying from that sprinkler um, to water in your garden. You're now using rainwater to water your whole garden simply by moving the sprinkler around. Now the pressure that you see coming out of that sprinkler is equivalent to about 3 bars. So the next stage in building a rainwater harvesting system, which is going to save you uh, water for your home and your garden, is adding an automated irrigation system onto the rainwater harvesting system so that the irrigation system can switch on and off when you require sections of your garden to be watered. What I've got here is I've got a four zone irrigation system. Each zone goes to a different part of my garden and has sprinklers going into the garden. The irrigation system, I'm going to switch it on manually. Um, once the irrigation system switches on, you will hear the pump switching on because the pump immediately detects that there's a change in pressure. The pump switches on and then the water will start coming out of different sections of the garden, different sections of the irrigation system. The last uh, level that we're going to look at, level four, will be what do we do when the council cuts off the water, if there's a water outage, how do we use the water that we've kept, that we've stored in our rainwater tank in order to pump that water back into the house. And that's what we're going to look at now. So this is the, this is the house and this is the water that comes from the council through the council taps into the house. If I switch on the tap, you can see the water is running, that's the water coming from the council. Now let's have a look at what happens when the council cuts off the water supply. So this is the water supply coming in from the council, that's the council main. I'm going to switch off the council water. If you now have a look at the tap, you'll see that the tap has run dry. There's no longer water coming out of the tap. Okay. okay, so once the council water has been cut off, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to divert water from my pump to pump back into the house. If we see this pipe coming out of my water pump, this one here is leading water back into the house. At the moment it's switched off. As soon as the council water is cut off, you come to your pump and you switch this water back on again. You might have heard that the pump immediately started. That's because there's no water in the council pipe. So the pump has picked up that there's a, a pressure differential and it's starting to pump water back into the house. Now we're going to go and switch on the tap in the house. As soon as I switch this tap on, the water is now pumping. This is the water coming from your rainwater harvesting tank. So this is rainwater and it's pumping straight into the house. So what happens now, because we've diverted the water from our water tank back into the house, is every time you switch on the shower in your house, you're going to get water from the rainwater tank, coming at high pressure because the water is coming from the pump. Every time you switch on the bath water, or every time you switch on the kitchen tap, the same thing happens. The pump starts and it pumps water back into the house. Now you may want to ask, is it safe to drink the water that's sitting in my rainwater harvesting tank? Uh, can I pour it into, uh, the, pour it through the kitchen and use that for cooking and for drinking? The answer is that it is best to install a filtration system in your kitchen so that the drinking water and the cooking water goes through the rain, through the filter inside your kitchen, and you'll then be drinking filtered water. For the bathroom. For purposes of showering, for flushing the toilets, for washing clothes, you can use water directly from the rainwater tank.